learning objectives. At the end of this module, you will be able to define motion, distance and displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration, uniform and non-uniform motion, graphical representation of motion, distance time graph, velocity time graph. So on. These movements are known as motion. In fact, you know, when your children play, we can say that you are also in motion. Motion. Simple. Complex. Let us see an example to understand other physical terms related to motion. So let O be point from where Rahul kicked the ball. A be the point on the wall. B be the point where the ball returns after hitting the wall. Distance is equal to OA plus AB. That is equal to 10 plus 8. That is equal to 18 meter. Displacement. The shortest distance measured from the initial to the final position of the object is known as displacement. Speed. The rate at which the ball covered the distance is known as speed. Time is equal to 6 second. Distance is equal to 18 meter. Speed is equal to d upon t that is equal to 3 meter per second. The SI unit of speed is meter per second. The average speed of an object is obtained by dividing the total distance traveled by the total time taken. Average speed is equal to total distance traveled upon total time taken. V is equal to S upon T. Uniform motion and non-uniform motion. Uniform motion. When an object covers equal distances in equal interval of time, it is said to be in a uniform motion. However small the time interval be. The motion of a plane at high altitude is a good example of uniform motion. Non-uniform motion. When an object covers unequal distances in equal interval of time, it is known as non-uniform motion. The motion of billiard balls and motion of honey bee are examples of non-uniform motion because their speed and direction are always changing. Speed with direction. Velocity. Velocity is the speed of an object moving in a definite direction. It can be changed by changing the object's speed, direction of motion or both. It can be uniform or variable. How velocity changes? When speed is increasing. When direction is changing. When speed and direction both are changing. When an object is moving along a straight line at variable speed, average velocity is equal to total displacement upon total time taken. When velocity of the object is changing at a uniform rate, that is, uniform acceleration, average velocity is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity divided by 2. V average is equal to U plus V divided by 2. If the velocity of an object changes from an initial value u to the final value v in time t, then acceleration a is a is equal to v minus u divided by t. This kind of motion is known as accelerated motion, that is acceleration. Acceleration. Acceleration is the measure of the change in the velocity of an object per unit time. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Of motion. Distance time graph. Distance time graph for an object moving with uniform speed. Velocity time graph. Velocity time graph with an object moving with uniform speed.
velocity time graph with an object moving with uniform acceleration. Velocity time graph with an object moving with non-uniform accelerated motion. Derivation of the three equations of motion by graphical method. Let an object moves along a straight line with uniform acceleration. Let initial velocity of the object be u and it moves with uniform acceleration a for time t and acquires final velocity v. During this motion, it covers distance s. We will drive the three equations of motion using this graph. V is equal to u plus at. S is equal to ut plus half at square. Or v square is equals to u square plus 2as. Initial velocity u is not equal to 0. u is equal to oa is equal to cd. V is equal to OE is equal to BC. V minus U is equal to BC minus CD is equal to BD. Time is equal to OC. Acceleration is equal to change in velocity divided by time. That is equal to BD divided by OC. A is equal to BC minus CD divided by OC. That is equal to V minus U upon T. AT is equal to V minus U. V is equal to U plus AT. S is equal to UT plus half AT square. Distance traveled is equal to area AOCDB. That is equal to area of rectangle AOCD plus area of triangle ADB. S is equal to OC multiplied by OA plus half AD multiplied by BD. S is equal to T multiplied by U plus half T in bracket BC minus CD. S is equal to UT plus half T in bracket V minus U. S is equal to half in bracket OA plus BC multiplied by OC. Because V minus U is equal to AT from first equation S is equal to ut plus half at square or v square is equals to u square plus 2 a s distance is equal to area o a c d b s is equal to area of trapezium o a c b s is equal to half in bracket o a plus b c multiplied by o c s is equal to half in bracket u plus v multiplied by t v minus u is equal to a t V minus U divided by A is equal to T. S is equal to half in bracket V plus U multiplied by V minus U divided by A. 2AS is equal to in bracket V plus U multiplied by in bracket V minus U. 2AS is equal to in bracket V square minus U square. Or V square is equals to U square plus 2AS. Balanced and unbalanced forces. Let's look at forces and movement now. The weight of this apple pulls it down and the branch pulls it up. The forces are balanced and the apple remains still. Force from branch. Weight of the apple. Now let us look at this van. The forces are balanced here too. There is no force pushing forward and no force pulling backwards. And we are not moving it either. But what happens when we try to unbalance the forces? When we start the car engine, now there is a large force pushing it forward and a small frictional force pushing it backward. The forces aren't balanced anymore. And that is what gets the van moving. Now, if we ease off the accelerator, we are back to balanced forces. The force from the engine equals the force of air resistance and friction pushing backwards. So, when forces are balanced, it doesn't mean things don't move. Balanced forces mean no change in speed. The van moves at a steady pace until we hit the accelerator and unbalance the forces again. First Law of Motion Newton's First Law of Motion An object remains in a state of rest 
or of uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change that state by an applied force. We tend to remain at rest with respect to the seat until the driver applies a braking force to stop the motor car. With the application of brakes, the car slows down but our upper body tends to continue in the same state of motion and bends forward. Lower body is in contact with the floor and seat of the car, so it comes to rest with the car. Now, let's look at another example. When we are standing in a bus and the bus begins to move suddenly, we tend to fall backwards. This is because the sudden start of the bus brings motion to the bus as well as to our feet in contact with the floor of the bus. But the rest of our body opposes this motion because of its inertia. Second Law of Motion The second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of force. For a constant mass, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the applied net force. The masses are all the same, and the object pushed with the largest force has the largest acceleration. For a constant applied net force, the acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass. The forces are all the same, and the object with the largest mass has the smallest acceleration. The acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object and directly proportional to the force acting on the object. Provided the force is measured in newtons, the second law can be written mathematically as F equals to M into A. Momentum The momentum P of an object is defined as the product of its mass m and velocity v. That is, p is equal to m multiplied by v. Momentum has both direction and magnitude. Its direction is the same as that of velocity v. The SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. Since the application of an unbalanced force brings a change in the velocity of the object, it is therefore clear that a force also produces a change of momentum. Third Law of Motion The third law of motion states that when one object exerts a force on another object, the second object instantaneously exerts a force back on the first. In case of inflated balloon, the air rushing outward is action while the balloon going upward is reaction. The gas produced on burning of fuel comes out of the rocket. So, gas exert a force on the rocket. As rocket exert force on the gas, which makes the rocket accelerate in the forward direction. Summary In this module we have learned, motion is the change in position. Motion can be measured through the distance moved or displacement. The motion can be uniform or non-uniform. When an object moves in a circular path with a uniform speed, its motion is called uniform circular motion. The rate at which the ball covered the distance is known as speed. Velocity is the speed of an object moving in a definite direction. Acceleration is the measure of the change in the velocity of an object per unit time.